Hey, what's up? It's Chris, founder of Thinkster.com, and in today's video, I'm excited to welcome our new Thinkster freelancer student, Ignacio from Spain. So, welcome, Ignacio, to the freelancer course. Great to have you here. I just spent my holidays in Spain, so I, uh, I'm uh, really um, uh, happy about you joining the the course as a as a uh, Spanish uh, fellow. Uh, European uh, Thinkster freelancer uh, student, and um, yeah, in this in these welcome videos, I also want to give you some practical tips that you can use in your freelancing business. And initially, I understand if you don't have a, a lot of skills uh, in coding, it is difficult to believe um, what people like me are uh, actually preaching uh, that you already have value, that you already can make money and create value on freelancing platforms such as Upwork or Fiverr or outside freelancing platforms just uh, being a coder, right? Uh, so you are a beginner, you don't see how you can create value, but you already have value. And now in this video, I will prove it to you. I will show you uh, one skill that you can do for sure. I mean, uh, everything that I already, already know about uh, you Ignacio, specifically you, uh, points towards uh, this uh, um, skill that you can uh, use or points towards the fact that you can, you already have value you can provide to the marketplace. So actually, so I have published uh, multiple books in, in the uh, English English language and uh, uh, these are coding books, right? right? And um, actually what I get contacted some, from time to time is an uh, translator, is, from, is by translators who actually want to uh, translate my books from English to Sp to Spanish, and then just maybe maybe get a profit share or get a fixed fixed fee for doing so, right? But I like I as a as a business owner, I'm I'm busy. I don't want to care about those things. So sometimes I just say yes if people contact me, ask like if they contact me actually. Um, if if I wouldn't say yes, I would lose out business, right? Because the books could be translated to another programming language. Often, often this is uh, like e even um, uh, even more true for self-published books, where the authors usually are involved in other works and they just publish for fun some books on the side. And um, and they of course they don't think of uh, translating it in, in in other languages. So uh, if somebody like you, Ignacio, if you are non-native uh, English speaker or like me, uh, you actually know a another language well right so you in your case uh, the spanish language and uh, if you check out like upwork you you just just search translate then you see the auto suggestion is translate english to spanish it's like the uh, third uh, most frequent query uh, uh, in with regards to translation so uh, the demand is definitely there okay so there are many many gigs and and why like why is this translation thing interesting for you as a coder because you can check out coding books you can translate coding books like the coffee break python series or something else so if you for example if you search for uh, self published authors you can check out leanpub uh, it's a page where there are a lot of coding books so if i just maybe make it a bit smaller here you can see leanpub okay and you see this book building virtual labs something like this you can you have we have books in computers and programming software agile software architecture data science computer science if you scroll down you get like you see a lot of um uh, uh books and all those books are coding related books right so there are also lots of books in python uh let's just Okay, here is Python. If you click on Python, you see there are lots and lots and lots and lots of books, right? So there's even like the things, the big bu uh, book bundle. Uh, so there are some some things the self-published books are there as well. And you can just what you can do is contact authors like me in this coding space and offer to translate the books from English to Spain and then offer to do some revenue share. It is possible on Leanpub to do some revenue share, and this way you can build yourself uh, some nice equity right passive income because the authors will keep promoting their books but you will get some passive income so you do the translation once and you get a repeated income month after month after month from the uh, sales of the of the um, uh, translated book and if you just check out the most successful one like this one Disc discrete mathematics for computer science you can just translate it and the nice thing is that by translating it you will learn those uh, skills, right? So if you check, for example, translate Python for hackers or Python 101 or something, or Python Journeyman or even the Coffee Break Python series, if you would translate those books, then of course you would learn the um, uh, the contents you are translating because you need to understand the content in order to translate it. And it can't, can't be done by uh, by any translator that is already offering the gig like translation 
from uh, English to Spanish, right? Because they don't have the technical know-how. But you as a coder, you are willing to learn, you you will have, and uh, you are building your skills, you are interested in coding. Otherwise, you wouldn't have subscribed to the Finkster uh, Freelancer course. So you have the skills, you can uh, do those ty type of gigs. They are excellent for learning. They are excellent to build a portfolio. They are excellent to build some equity, actually to, be to build some passive income in the future and to, to get your reven revenue share in this, in this uh, um, um, sales of products right not only services as a freelance developer and then of course you can also offer your offer your your services on upwork and other, other on the side but i think this one opportunity is a it's it's a very specific great opportunity uh if if uh, you um want to build some passive income over time and also an opportunity to actually build your profile and build your skills and get paid in the process and this is like this is only one opportunity you can pursue as a freelance developer of course i mean the i would say the the takeaway from this video should be think outside the box, right? There's there are plenty of opportunities. So if I just if you are just open minded, if you go through the world with an open mindset, you will see millions of those opportunities that are not well understood, but you can just go there and take them, right? So nobody will tell you those opportunities apart from me, maybe in the in the, in the videos, in the freelancer course videos, because it's my job to do, right? It's my job to help you uh, succeed as a freelance developer. But you can, but I mean, um, yeah, apart from that, um, nobody will give you permission to, to do anything. You just have to take it. You just have to take permission, do anything you anything you would like to do and any niche, pursue any niche you uh, you are very interested in and you're excited about. It could be blockchain, it could be coding, it could be web development, it could be uh, data science, machine learning, anything, right? And you, and you don't even have to, I mean, you can find your, like a very tiny, unique combination of things to do. For example, contacting self-published authors and translating books from English to Spanish and building yourself a profile of books that all generate revenue for you over time and, and increasing your skills in the process because you do the translation of technical books and things like that that I mean they are not in they are they don't they're usually not in a textbook to learn they're, uh, they are not in a to-do list on a blog you can you can just uh, uh, um, uh, like get it from the web some somewhere or you can you usually cannot find them in YouTube videos from um, other creators these are things you just encounter in practice if you are out there and if you are open-minded and keep your eyes open okay ignacio thanks for joining the freelancer course and see you in the course bye